Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Monday, September 16th IPFS Project Operations call. We are going to run through our things and then also just quickly look back at our Q3 OKRs because we are doing scoring this week on all of our OKRs. Um, let me just share the screen so that everyone can see it. Mm -hmm. All right, um, Stephen Stephen couldn't make the meeting today. It's his birthday. Happy birthday, Stephen, on that beautiful mountain that you're on. Hopefully you get Wi-Fi for later calls today. You should watch this recording so that you can see us wishing you a happy birthday. We would sing, but you're not here. So we're singing in spirit. Um, but he, he mentioned that, um, that we're going to be doing another patch release for Go IPFS 0.4.23 um, because Go 1.13, one, yeah, Go 1.13 um, created some build issues. And so we're going to resolve that. This is another patch release. Um, we are still working on um, finalizing all the, the testing needed to feel super confident about some larger improvements slated for 0.5.0, our next minor release. And um, there is an issue, so feel free to go and comment on that issue about um, the exact set of tests using our new test bed um, kind of testing infra setup to uh, ensure that the set of improvements we want to make, which includes things to the DHT, includes some of the bit swap improvements that have been happening in other groups, um, Adin's IPNS improvements, that all of those are, are highly tested so that we can feel really confident that they're only going to make the GoIPFS um, build and, and network better. Um, I know that there's also a JS IPFS release that's in in flight right now. I believe that started last week, um, and it's had it entered the kind of three week release cycle that is now common across Go IPFS and JS IPFS. So I'm giving us a snaps for um, meeting that OKR quite effectively. Um, I don't know the exact issue on that, but uh, anyone who's closer, feel free to pipe up. Um, otherwise. And probably just heads up that there there is a JS IPFS release in flight as well. Thank you, Hugo. Thank you. Anything to add to my very short announcement about it? Sure. Uh, we started the. Um the release process. Um, you can track it on the issue I put, I put there. And we also include now uh, the interrupt tests on our CI to make sure everything works perfectly. Um, and yeah, we added some new commands to AG so we can kind of have a, a, a release branch and do all the things needed there and not block master. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. That's very exciting. Thank you. Awesome. Arkady, do you want to give a quick collaborations update? Uh, yes. Can you hear me okay? Yep, just fine. Okay, fantastic. So uh, I have uh, two quick things. Uh, one is that uh, the ENS, uh, ETH DNS plugin is uh, officially listed in the core DNS directory. So you can go to their site right now and look at external plugins and grab it from there. Uh, and you can use it today. So that's, that's great news. Uh, the other thing is that we've been making lots of progress through the new pipeline and have been kind of processing the backlog of both current perspective and uh, uh, completed uh, collaborations through it. Um, and uh, it's working well. And uh, we should have uh, a meeting that, or a, I guess, in first an announcement of a uh, reasonably completed process pretty soon. So you'll, you'll all be able to jump in, take a look. Awesome. Sounds great.
Um, all right, community. Um, Terry took a pass at an awesome um, blog post for some of the, um, the IPFS camp content that is um, ready for, for sharing out with the wider community. So this is um, Core Courses. She put together a, a blog post for that and also um, has some useful connections with the Proto School um, lessons that, that relate. Um, interviews and sci-fi fair interviews and keynotes. Um, both, I think, can be bundled together into a single indexing post that, that shares them out to the community. They're all awesome. I've like stared at the content a little bit. Um, I like, watched it on like 3x speed. But um, this also needs a post. And then, and then we're done, I think, with, with the video content coming out of IPFS camp in terms of making sure the community has access to it. I definitely think there's more we can do here in terms of organizing it to, to make it super accessible to folks. But um, in terms of from a community comms perspective, it will, it'll all be out there and indexed in some blog post or another. Um, so that I believe is the, the outstanding one. Um, that includes, the sci-fi fair includes interviews with, um, with Birdie, with Brave. Um, I believe there's a few others. Um, uh, Janice, Giannis, I don't remember how to pronounce that one, a couple other places like that. Um, it's super cool. Uh, they're going to be really exciting folks. Jessica, hand? Uh, yeah, just FYI, we do have um, an open issue in the docs group about the best way to incorporate the core course content into the overall docs. Uh, that's going to be part of the effort that we're doing with the card sort for the navigation system. Um, so, so that will be incorporated soon. I don't have a timeline, but just, just so that um, you all know that we are aware of that and trying to figure out the best way to um, fit that into both our existing content structure and, and what we want to do with the navigational structure going forward. Nice. It'll be snazzy. Yeah, they are. It's pretty good in terms of I watched at least one of the courses um, and the audio is pretty decent. You do get this kind of like someone is talking towards the microphone and then they look up the thing and they're talking away from the microphone and then they're talking back at the microphone. But it's still you can follow everything and um, it does it does a really good job capturing like the flow and the visuals and all of that stuff. Um, so. I think they're awesome. I think people should totally use them to, to onboard on all pieces. Um, I will be catching up on the electives I missed because you couldn't be in two places at once. Um, snazzy. Cool. Yeah, and then I just, um, I have like an IPFS alert and I spent a little bit of the weekend managing like just arbitrary comms for things on the internet, but it's fine. Um, cool, lower priority projects and maintenance. Um, do we have a Henry on the call? Well, he's drafted a, an awesome blog post on 0.9.2 um, IPFS Desktop's most recent release. Uh, it, it is like a great snapshot back in time as well of like the progression that desktop has taken over time and the new features it's added since then. Um, if, I, if I find a link to it, I'll stick it in here as well. Um, but it's in the blog repo and it's super cool. And desktop has a new update, so everyone should update desktop as well. Um, I found that every time a desktop gets a new update, it turns off running desktop. And I look, I'm like, oh, crap, I'm not running desktop right now. No wonder, like, Companion has fewer peers than normal. Um, I don't think that there are any other um, main focus things here other than they're working on spinning up testing for, for various projects we maintain as well to make sure that we can maintain them thoroughly and not introduce any bugs. Snazzy. All right. David, research tastic. Tell us about all the cool stuff. <laughs> I like that research tastic. Uh, cool. So um, last week has been pretty pretty busy. Um, we kicked off and made a lot of progress on just describing like a bunch of open problems across IPFS and like peer to peer. Uh, you can see I didn't have the time to link here the pull requests into this document, but if you open that link that Molly just opened, you'll see links to those pull requests. And so an open problem statement goes from the description of the problem, what is possible today on IPFS ecosystem. So this is like also a like great documentation because when people ask about how to do mutable data and then we tell them IPNS and CRDTs, like they, are, they kind of like get a little bit lost. Uh, but of course, like in all of these solutions, there are always like some shortcomings 
And so an open problem statement is both the open problem that we still need to solve and a definition of what is the criteria to like succeed and, and like complete this problem. Um, but at the same time, a survey of like what is possible within the IPFS ecosystem and what is possible outside of the IPFS ecosystem. So um, this is kind of like a great intro, like welcome package for researchers to help and, and like to join us and, and like solving these problems. And, and we hope to then match this uh, work to like, uh, well, just like leveraging the work that the test infrastructure team is doing by providing attached to these open problems also some tests where people can see, like, for example, when we talk about scalability, that like, they can run themselves on their machine some, some simulations so that then they have like a platform to even like do improvements and then test to see if they pass the criteria or not. I see a hand from Molly, so go ahead. Is the, is the aim or, or objective to make, make these things open so that anyone in the community can see these open problems and contribute to them and comment on them? Or is it planning to stay private for a while? Absolutely. So actually, they are open today. Uh, if you click the, the pull request, they are on the IPFS slash research. So this is just a link uh, to track it. When you um, click that pull request, it's actually open. Uh, it's on the IPFS slash research. And so the, the plan, and like this also touches on uh, Q4 OKRs, the plan is like to complete these open problem statements, like announce them, say like, here's the thing that we still need to solve. Here's the state of the art in the IPFS ecosystem. Here's the state of the art that we know from the rest of the world. Uh, here's what you can try to do. Like here's some ideas, but I like, come help us solve them. And then we want to also create RFPs um, to like, like sponsor people to work with us, like establish some collaborations and, and be more proactive about it, like going to academic conferences, going to research conferences, like we are going next week, or even going to labs from unis, uh, like use some of the relationships that we have already to like really uh, foster some, some collaborations that really enable us to make progress here. Um, and, and so yeah, like, you are welcome to, to like review like these open problem statements. Uh, let us know if they are descriptive enough, if they are informative enough. Uh, some of these are still in the draft phase. So you see like the pull request is gray because they are still very, very drafty. Uh, the one that is green is of course the one that like can be read uh, from the beginning to the end. But like there is still more improvements to be made. And so this is the update on open problems. Uh, yeah, like I said, the, the, it, the, they are all in pull requests. So they haven't been merged yet. Uh, so next week uh, we have a workshop. Um, so uh, IPFS, uh, could we chat about all these related to grant programs? Absolutely. Uh, do you have a question right now, Arkady, that you want me to answer or later? Okay, uh, sounds good. So next week, the um, kind of like a, a team between IPFS, PL Research, and Leap Your Peer is going to the ACM, ICN. So ACM is just Association for Computer Machinery. Uh, ICN is the um, uh, Internet-Centric Networking. Wait, am I saying this correctly now? My brain just blank. Internet-Centric Networking. Internet. Internet-Centric Networking. Yeah, I'm saying this correctly. Um, and, and so we are going to deliver an IPFS plus Leap Your tutorial for two hours and a half for the community uh, there. Um, and so we are going to reuse materials from IPFS camp, um, expand them to adjust to this audience. So this is like a very uh, like experienced audience, like all of them are network researchers for two plus years, uh, or maybe some of them are like, like the, mostly, uh, the most known uh, network researchers like with a lot of um, like publications. Um, and so we want to use that to kind of like bring them into the IPFS and Leap Year ecosystem, show them how rich the, the, the stack that we've been building is, how easy it is to hack with it, uh, and also invite them to like, again, tackle some of these open problems with us and, and see like, what areas of interest are interested for, interesting for them. Um, so then we have the next thing, which is a research intensive workshop. So this is another workshop. This is one is internal. Um, so this is um, a workshop that was, the idea was conceived back in August um, in a meeting that will happen in Berlin uh, around Web3 Summit. And it's a workshop where it's kind of like the research team 
um, enabling the project teams by doing the legwork of like serving the state of the art, um, gathering all the ideas, and then like having a three day intensive thing where we do actual protocol design. So this is not a research intensive workshop to explore like future, future, future work. It's actually a workshop designed to tackle some of these like most pressing issues. And so you can see here a list of selected topics. Like we, we had a bunch of topics that were gathered from the two project teams. Um, and then after some prioritization and some filtering and some commenting and reviewing, we, we condensed this list to like four, uh, four topics. Um, and so for the next month, there will be some work preparing the content for this workshop. But the idea is to have like these like very fast training sessions and then design discussions and then spec writing that then can be implemented on a protocol. Um, so yeah, there is that. And I guess like related, um, there is also going to be a research PM summit post FCON. And this is like for the whole protocol apps research, all the projects. Um, and which means like there's actually a lot of events happening uh, on research land. Like there is a workshop next week. There is the like there is DEFCON, and then there is the PM summit, and then there is the workshop intensive. So uh, there will be a lot of traveling, a lot of <laughs> a lot of like changing locations and time zones. So yeah, like a lot of exciting things. Um, well, a lot of movement as well. Um, but but yeah, like uh, people, yeah, like exciting stuff. <laughs> Questions. Is any, I know this stuff is early and like <laughs> you've drafted a ton of stuff just since our last meeting. Um, but yeah. any of this at the state where if there's someone who's asking about doing research in the um, P2P space, we could point them at some of these open research problems or the IPFS slash research repo as, as a place to like at least get started with the things that we are thinking about and think are important. Um, or is it, hey, maybe hold off for another week or something, things will be in a better state then? Uh, yeah, like that's an excellent question. And um, it's an answer, I guess it depends. So uh, if it's someone like looking for funding, right now we still haven't formulated like what is going to be the RSP model or even like uh, how much funding we will have to uh, invest on uh, like exploring these uh, um, problems through collaborations. So that's something that we are like, we are trying to get that information as soon as possible. Uh, if people are just like looking for like, interesting problems to work on, absolutely, like route them uh, our way. Like we like the, the open problems, uh, although like some of them are more fleshed out than others, but like they still plant the seeds necessarily. And they point to a lot of conversations that we have had in the last four years about like this specific open problem. And so if they are like excited about that, like it's a very quick, you know, like a 15, 20 minute conversation with them to like reel them up and, and like, get, them, get, them, get them up to speed. Um, and so, yeah, like if they are super excited to work on these things, absolutely. If they are like looking for funding first, like maybe give us a couple more weeks just like to get that settled so that we, when we talk with them, we actually have a proper answer rather than, uh, I'm not sure. Any other questions? I, I don't see everyone's faces, so I don't see if there are more hands. Okay, now I see everyone's faces, but I don't see my hands. <laughs> any, other, any other updates or questions before we jump into OKR grading? Uh, I just have like a question, Sasha, and it's for Akari. Akari, I know you gave me an update through email about like still working on the Cloud 5.0. Um, I just want to know um, if there is any suggestion about like, so given that there is a, a potential partner waiting, is there kind of like a, a, a template message to say, we are about waiting, I don't know. Like, or, or like, like given that we, you know what I mean? Like, sh should I say something? Should I just like, be silent? Uh, should I route them to you? Like, what is the best next step to make sure that we don't cool down that relationship? Or maybe your connection is not good today, so maybe I can just ask this through chat, and that's fine as well. David, I'd, I'd just suggest pinging the collab email list. Probably worth like just having it documented in that that channel. I know that you've documented it in the past, but probably worth pinging the thread and just refreshing it so that it's in in people's heads. Okay, yeah. So there's like some emails going back and forth, but but I guess I can make sure it's on the collab um, mailing list as well so that uh, it gets tracked, definitely. Good idea. All right. Sweet, awesome, thank you.
Yeah, perfect. Um, all right, we are we have reached end of the quarter. We're missing some people that we we would hopefully have to do um, collaborating. But for the ones of us that are here, um, reminder that we we need to get these done by end of week. And so now is the time to do to do our grades. Um, the more the more precise using the um, the notes on grading section to specify like exactly what point we got to is super useful. Um, and let's try not to over inflate. I was looking back at our, our OKR scores from previous quarters and I'm like, we said this was like 0.9 and yet we're still working on it this quarter. Like our, our grading can sometimes get a little over optimistic for, uh, for how much we're, we're actually done with something at the end of the quarter. Um, I think we got like a, an 0.9 on Unix FSV2 in Q1. And like, we definitely haven't launched Unix of SV2. Uh, so reminder to, to specify exactly kind of what these mean for us. Yeah, the last 10% takes 90%. Um, the aim here is like, let's try and be precise and try and reminder to us, refresh ourselves on writing really precise OKRs, the document that we did. Um, okay, we definitely, we definitely shipped at least one post per month. Um, but I also ping people directly into this document to help respond to things, which would be snazzy. Any, any like comments on OKR related stuff or looking forward into next quarter's OKR related things in our remaining two minutes? I'll stop sharing so I can see the phone space. Everyone good? Any other things people want to add, share, questions? What are the things that we are planning to demo at DevCon? Like, do we have like any task force designed for launching something at DevCon? Um, Is that a surprise? <laughs> I, I feel like anyone who who watches our our recordings regularly gets to be in the inside in the in the loop. Um, you get to be part of, part of any surprise announcement that's happening yet. Um, at Defcon, the aim is to, to talk about browser collab work that we've been doing. Um, it's in a pretty exciting state. Um, a lot of progress has been being made, um, both on the Brave um, companion integration and uh, in our conversations with Opera. And so the hope is that if, we, if we're able to solidify those things in like the next week and a half, um, then it will, and also the ENS work, which is like not browser specific, specifically, but it's related, you know? Um, and so talking about those, those three collabs um, and, and sharing kind of this bigger moment to, to, to talk about them with the community, to partner with the people who have been doing all of this kind of, you know, work along the borders of, of various organizations to um, help make this happen is super exciting. Um, and also just like that level of um, how easy it is to use within browsers is a big deal and um, something that people need to know exists so that they can make use of it and start building things that, that utilize, um, you know, direct uh, embedded companion with TCP and WebSockets, uh, which would be, you know, there, there are things you can do on top of that in Brave that um, we should get some people experimenting with by sharing it out more. Um, so that's, that's the objective is to share that. We also, um, the, the local IPFS community, um, um, I believe our, our Japan Proto School chapter organizer is helping organize two um, IPFS meetups around DevCon. So there's one 
the Sunday before DevCon in Osaka, and then there's one the Saturday after DevCon in Tokyo. And so um, kind of one is aimed a little bit more at the people who are in town for, for DevCon, and the other one is a little bit more aimed at the, the like local um, developer community that doesn't know much about IPS yet, but would like to learn more and maybe, you know, um, doesn't have any visibility into DevCon. They're just, you know, uh, haven't had a chance to to go to an IPFS meetup because um, there hasn't been one. I, I think these are going to be the first two IPFS meetups that I know of in Japan. Tell me if I'm wrong. Um, but that's going to be super cool and exciting and hopefully um, can build from there into a, a wider community. So um, that's what I know. That is super, super cool. Um, yeah, like... B both things are very exciting. Um, for for the first one, um, like if, if there is any plan around communications from like writing a blog post that explains all those updates uh, to actually having our team or the community just tweet about that those experiments, right? Uh, it might be a good time to showcase like all of those brave integration experiments, Firefox integration experiments, and like just have kind of like scheduled tweets just to go out so that people like. Like that we use that window of attention to capture capture everyone's imagination imagination and like hacking time. Um, for the, the portal choir. school, say again. I said you're preaching to the choir. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, <laughs> of giving people the tools through which to uh, to better promote the the exciting work they're working on. Absolutely, awesome. And so, and for the portal school, wow, I was going to ask. Um, so like we used in the past meetup.com, um, like a, yeah, it's just like a good platform for like just broadcasting and saying, hey, like the meetup is happening. Typically they are very good with localization. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's the best thing for Japan or not, but like worth checking if they are using it or if we can just, we, can, we have a pro account, so we can just like give like the, the Osaka and Tokyo meetups like, uh, an account for the, those regions for free, uh, and yeah, it, it's just like a great way to like attract and track and get people together. I think um, Masa, who's the Japan chapter organizer, yeah, he definitely he recommended Eventbrite for trying to get kind of more um, okay uh, an international developer audience. Eventbrite is good, but for more local people, he recommends something called. Pass, which I'm not familiar with, but seemingly is the, the more local um, Japan um, kind of event notification system. And then there's a couple of other things related to DevCon and just events in Osaka and stuff like that, which to post on. Um, so I think um, Masa is mostly going to handle that as the, the lead organizer for, for these, um, but definitely good to know that we can give him support on uh, setting up an account if that'll be useful for him. Okay, sounds good. Exciting. Cool. Well, we're a little bit late for this weekly call, so we should we should hop over. But thank you all, and have a wonderful rest of your Monday.